my real world in the field experience with the SlyPod and the Aircross 2. SlyPod E is a super expensive monopod and the Aircross 2 is almost a good gimbal. We'll start with the SlyPod. I bought this because I needed a slider and this thing looked super unique and really capable of getting awesome shots when it was paired with the Moza Aircross 2. I bought the SlyPod E because the only difference is first what it's made of. It's a little heavier, which didn't bother me. It didn't come with a handle, which again, didn't bother me because I have the tripod feet on the bottom anyway. And it didn't come with the head. That was a mistake. Mounting a camera on this thing or an L bracket or anything is impossible to get straight. Let me show you. So here's an L plate I bought and we screw this thing on. So I have this L plate screwed onto the SlyPod, but when I screw it on tight, it is not parallel at all to the tripod mount. This tripod mount is stuck. It won't twist, it doesn't turn. If you could do that, the problem would be solved. You could just twist this, lock it in place and be good, but it doesn't move. So this isn't usable. Like if you mount this on a tripod and you go for a push in shot, your camera is like 20 degrees off axis. Um, so you unscrew it a little bit, you try and balance it like that, but then you turn and your camera just falls over. This was a constant problem. I probably spent two hours just trying to get something that was tight and usable and would stay sturdy and it wouldn't work. So the SlyPod E doesn't come with that head and now I kind of regret it. It's like $90, but maybe that would solve the problem because this is so annoying. I couldn't even get anything set up and mounted on this straight because by the time it was tight on the screw, it wasn't straight anymore. I didn't think that would be much of an issue once the Aircross 2 was mounted on top, but that created a whole new set of problems. While we're talking about just the SlyPod, I will say it looked pretty cool on paper to be able to mount this on a tripod and just go back and forth and be able to swivel this around and get some really unique shots, especially automated repeatable shots. But what I found was I would level this, I would get everything perfectly level, I would use my phone and I would tell it to go out. And what would happen is as this went out, no matter how sturdy of a tripod and head I used, it would always dip down just a little bit. I couldn't keep my camera perfectly horizontal just because the weight of this was shifting about 12 inches out and it would dip. Even if it was slight, I couldn't get the perfectly horizontal shot that I really wanted. What I found out real quick is that this thing is useless unless the batteries are charged. Well, that sounds pretty obvious, but with any other slider on the market, you can flip a switch or take the motor off and get some good manual shots, just sliding it back and forth with your hand. This thing doesn't do a thing without batteries. So after using just the SlyPod for a few days without the Aircross 2 attached, I decided that I didn't want it, that I would send it back if the Aircross 2 wasn't on top of it. So I decided to put the Aircross 2 on top and see if anything got better. While I'm attaching these, I'll tell you about the app. I think that the Moza app is better than the Crane app for sure, but it's not as good as DJI's app. DJI seems to be a little bit more polished, a little bit more English, if that's not offensive. I don't know, is that offensive? Um, you can just tell that Moza, English is not their first language, especially in the manual, but even in the app itself. Um, but anyways, this thing's connected now. I thought this would solve most of my problems of not being able to line things up straight. Uh, I thought that I would be able to do some more unique things. Um, if you watch the promo videos, and even if you read reviews, you see what this should be capable of. You see on paper that it all connects, it works together, it should be awesome. But what I haven't seen was people actually using it in the field. Not doing reviews, not talking about it, but actually using it. So I decided I'm actually gonna use this thing. I'm gonna try it out. And after about a week, I decided this thing is useless and I'm sending it all back. And I'm gonna tell you why. First off, if you read the website, it says the safe payload is like nine pounds, which pretty much the gimbal plus any camera is gonna be more than nine pounds. It says the maximum is like 22 pounds, I believe, but the safe 
load is only nine, which I don't really understand. Like is 22 pounds not safe? I'm not really sure what that means, um, but you know, I used it anyway. So of course, if you mount this on a tripod and you put your camera here and it dips down, if you mount this thing on a tripod with the gimbal and now your center of gravity is way, way, way off, this thing doesn't stand a chance to stay level when you automate this thing all by itself. And yes, there is a screw right here, so you can connect it this way and make it a little bit more sturdy, but I, I tried it both ways and it really didn't matter. One thing that is missing from this is any sort of gimbal controls on the bottom or even the top of the slide pod. So when you're using this paired together, you're holding it out like this. You're not holding it like this or else the slide pod's useless, which it is useless anyway, but you're not holding it like this. You have no controls when you've got it out like this. If there was a joystick right here, I would be able to do a lot more with this. I would be able to push in, pull out, extend, whatever, and control the camera with the joystick, but there's no controls for the gimbal on the slide pod. And I was thinking, even if there is an optional handle accessory with a joystick, that would create so much more possibility and make this thing a lot more useful in general. One reason I bought this combo was because on the website and on reviews, it looks like this is a perfect pair that combos together and you can do pre-programmed repeatable shots over and over again. But what I found was that anything besides direct remote control was super confusing. I could not figure out for the life of me how to get this to extend, the camera to pan this way, tilt that way, hold it. DJI's app is way, way easier than this. Uh, in my opinion. I couldn't figure it out. Maybe you guys have had a different experience, but trying to program these two to work together was incredibly difficult and I couldn't get anything usable that made sense. So after using this combo on several shoots for about a week, I figured out it's pretty much useless. This slide pod connected to this Gimbal was supposed to be some incredible combo that did some awesome things, but everything I was doing, I could do with it attached to a normal monopod. If I wanted to go up or out, I had to find the little plus button, which is hard to see or feel, and it, it's so slow, like, I could just move in faster with the monopod rather than sitting here and hold this. Um, the pre-programmed stuff sounds awesome, but you cannot mount this thing on a tripod and have it stay level. The weight is just so heavy on any tripod, it just pulls it down even a little bit. So I wasn't comfortable mounting this on a tripod. I couldn't even program it with the phone. So it was just a really frustrating experience. I can't find a reason that I would need this slide pod attached to the gimbal rather than just using a normal monopod. If you wanna hold it way up and then pull it way down really quick, you can do that with a monopod. This thing is too slow to go up and down and do those maneuvers anyway. Uh, plus it's super loud. I don't really think that matters in much of anything, um, but it is, it is pretty loud. So on to just the gimbal. So the gimbal without the slide pod at all. Um, I came from a crane. I wanted to get this gimbal because it worked with the slide pod. And two, I wanted something that could control my Nikon Z6. Uh, and this says it does. And after about an hour, I did figure out how to connect it. And that was basically my fault. I didn't have the right cable selected. I was using the right cable, but I had the wrong cable selected in the gimbal. So that is my fault. Um, but one thing that was frustrating was I was trying out the different options and it takes a while for these two to pair. So even if you have the right one, it takes a little bit for it to connect. So I didn't think it was the right one because it wasn't connecting. But anyways, once I got them connected, it works fairly well. Uh, sometimes I would press record and nothing would happen. Um, every time I pressed record, it took probably three seconds to start recording, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but I was shooting an event and a kid started to do something super cute. So I pressed record and it took three seconds. And in the world of kids, three seconds is a long time. So by the time the gimbal and the camera 
communicated and the camera started recording, the kid was done doing something cute. Um, but I, I don't know. You can't complain that much that it takes three seconds to record. Um, another, I guess, complaint or maybe feature request is that you can't program any of these buttons or wheels to do anything on the camera itself. Like, I wish I could press and hold this trigger to get the camera to turn on auto ISO. Or I could focus the camera with the wheel without the crazy follow focus thing on the front. Uh, I wish the buttons could program the camera. Um, that's wishful thinking. I wish the record button would record quicker. My biggest complaint with this gimbal is that when you are doing a pan follow, and you press the joystick down, it cancels the pan follow, which I have no idea why. So I'm coming around a corner and I wanna look up. It stops panning. It's crazy. So I turn, 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 press up. It stops panning. It's not panning as long as I'm holding the joystick. But when I let go, it'll pan again. This is super annoying. DJI does it. The cranes do it. And I'm saying the cranes because I can't say the Z word right. Zion, Zoon, Zuhayun, I don't know. Anyways, every gimbal I've ever owned, you can use the joystick while panning. This, I don't know, it doesn't work. So that's super frustrating. I would be coming around the corner and I'd want to look down, but you can't with the joystick. So of course you say, well, turn tilt follow on. That's fine. Like you know, if you can get that right. But a lot of the times I'll be coming from up here and I'll wanna come down and tilt or come down and look up. So you really need to use the joystick and you can't. Um, it's impossible, I can't figure it out. I'm talking to Moza right now. They don't understand my question. They told me to send them a video, so I'm gonna do that. So we'll see. So a couple positive things about the gimbal is I like that the wheel is free. You don't have to pay extra for it. But then again, I don't really know what I'm doing with the wheel that I can't do with the joystick because the wheel can't control aperture or ISO or focus or anything on the camera. It can just control the gimbal. Um, so I like the wheel, but I don't really know why. It's pretty. I also like that when you can figure out how to program the gimbal or the slipod with your phone, when you turn your phone off, the gimbal resumes whatever it's doing. I've worked with several other gimbals that when you turn the phone off or even navigate out of that app, the gimbal quits, it forgets what it's doing. But this app sends the info to the gimbal and the gimbal does its own thing from there. I also like that the firmware updates are easy and done with the app and you don't have to plug it into your computer and download bin files and all of that. So the update process is pretty awesome. I also like this dial back here. I like that you can change the follow and lock of all three axes, is, axes, axi. Uh, you can change all three of them from here mid shot. You don't have to open an app. You don't have to go through menus. So I can do um, pan follow or I can do tilt follow, which is what I found myself doing a lot. I would do tilt follow because the joystick doesn't work while you're panning at the same time. Uh, so I would do that and then I would quickly turn off the tilt follow. So that way I could get some of the shots that every other gimbal's been super easy to get with but um, that was a workaround I did find, was turning off and on the tilt follow while panning. So I did like the speed of the gimbal. I liked how sturdy it felt. When I was using the crane, it always felt like it was straining a little bit. This thing's just a little bit more beefy. Of course, it's not as beefy as the Moza Air. Uh, it's, I think, seven pounds it can hold, which is plenty for the mirrorless Nikon systems. Overall, I like the gimbal. I do wish that I could tilt the camera down or up with the joystick while panning. That's really, really annoying and it seems so simple to fix, even in a firmware update. Um, I like the screen. I like that there's not flashing lights. I like that I can control and change things without an app. I'm always about easily doing things. Out in the field, it doesn't matter how many awesome features an app has or what the gimbal can do if you can't actually change it while you're working. And then I found a lot of the times the 
features that you can't easily do, you never use because you're in a hurry and you're shooting, you're working. So I like the gimbal. I don't like the slide pod. Everything I do with the slide pod and the gimbal, I can do with a normal monopod. It doesn't add any value to me. I can pre-program it on my phone if I can ever figure it out. It's incredibly difficult, but that is not worth it. It's uh, pretty pointless, actually. So I'm definitely returning the slide pod. It doesn't work on its own because I can never get the camera straight. The weight shifts too much when it extends out to make it dip. It is pretty slow. Um, I'm just, I'm returning the slide pod. It doesn't make sense. I'm keeping the gimbal. I was hoping that these two would form an awesome combination. I was hoping I could get some super creative shots, but it, it, I can't, I can't figure it out. If anybody knows of somebody that's actually really using this and not just talking about the features, let me know. Um, I, I can't figure it out. So that's my quick simple review on these two. The gimbal's okay. A few little things I wish were different. Slide pod's pretty useless. Stick with a, another slider, pretty much any other slider. So that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions about this combination, let me know. I know I had a ton of questions when I was setting it up and I couldn't find the answers online, especially with Nikon cameras. So let me know what questions you have. I'll try and answer you and help you get it figured out. And if anyone has a different experience than me or knows of somebody that is actually using this successfully, please let me know. And I would love, love, love to love this product because it looks so cool, but I just can't. Thanks.